history our past what is history history may be defined as a careful systematic record of past events such as records of the royal dynasties and the way of life of the common people arranged in a chronological way take the example of your family album it has photographs of your ancestors some past events such as birthday parties marriage ceremony of your elder brother etc arranged in such a way that events that happen first are pasted in the beginning followed by the ones that happen later your album photographs give you information about the dress culture and traditions of your family thus the album actually displays your family history a person who studies the source material analyzes and records the events is called a historian the source material may be divided into two categories archaeological and literary archaeological source material the archaeological source material are generally discovered through survey and excavations digging of the earth the remains thus found can be dated after going through a complicated technique these remains include tools weapons articles of daily use that is pottery coins inscriptions copper plates clay tablets etc that is seals and sealings manuscripts etc coins the study of coins is known as numismatics the coins throw light on ancient times the language engraved on them reveal the exact period to which they belong the coins of greek kings have been found in the northwest regions of india as some states came up in this region after invasion of alexander the great in 326 bce similarly in south india coins of roman kings have been found indicating trade relations between india and rome kanishka the great issued gold coins of the same weight as that of the romans to avoid trouble in exchange in trade edicts and inscriptions the writings engraved on stones rocks pillars metal plates clay tablets etc are called inscriptions the study of inscriptions is called epigraphy several edicts of emperor ashoka the great give us a lot of information about his achievements and socio economic life of the people of his times similarly junagadh rock inscriptions of king rudradaman and hathi gumpha inscription in kharavela of the kalinga ruler provide authentic information about these times trivia numismatic society of india was found on 28th december 1910 at ilahabad by a group of six persons in 1923 state museum lucknow became the office of the society in 1933 to 34 the office shifted to mumbai at the prince of wales museum in 1957 the office of the society shifted to varanasi in the building of the college of indology now department of ancient history and archaeology banaras hindu university The society built its own building in 1966. Artifacts. Artifacts are works of art including sculptures and paintings. This is source material of cultural history as it helps us in reconstructing the cultural life of the ancient people. The sculptures of Sanchi Stupa provide us different aspects of human life as they inform us about the lifestyles of rulers, priests, merchants and musicians etc the specimens found in takshila that belonged to the period of kanishka the great throw light on the gandhara art and religious beliefs of the kushana kings the images and paintings of the gupta period still engraved in the elora caves and murals of ajanta display articles of daily use jewelry hair styles etc They also yield information about the religious beliefs of the people. Trivia 
Bhimbetka Caves of Madhya Pradesh, located 46 km south to Bhopal, are the largest treasure house of prehistoric art in the country. They are enchanting rock paintings that date back to Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Neolithic periods adorning these caves. These paintings show striking similarity to the aboriginal rock paintings of the savanna regions of Australia, the paintings done by pygmies of the Kalahari Desert and the Paleolithic Lascaux Caves paintings of France. Literary Source Material Thousands of years ago, when there was no paper to write on, our ancestors wrote on dried bhojpatras, the bark of the trees. As there was no printing press, the accounts were written by hand. These handwritten accounts are called manuscripts. Literary sources include two kinds of literature, religious literature and secular literature. Religious literature The religious literature of India includes the Brahmanical literature, Buddhist and Jain sacred texts and epics. The earliest belief of Vedic region were grouped in four Vedas, namely Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved and Atharva Ved. The Rig Ved is the oldest work among the Brahmanical literature. It throws light on the religious, social and economic life of the early Aryans. The later Vedas and Samhitas provide information on the life of post-Vedic Aryans. The Smritis composed during Gupta age give us valuable information about this period. Among the epics, Ramayana was written by Maharishi Valmiki and Mahabharata was written by Maharishi Ved Vyas. Both convey that truth prevails over evil and they have great religious importance for the Hindus. Bhagavad Gita, which is a part of Mahabharata, is a philosophical text that sets out the importance of selflessness, duty and devotion to work, spirituality, meditation, etc. Among Buddhist literature, the holy books are Pitakas and Mahadhampada. They contain the views of Buddha, rules of the Buddhist Sangh and the Buddhist philosophy. The stories of previous incarnations of Lord Buddha are compiled in Jatakas. The Milinth Panho presents a philosophical dialogue between Manindar, the Greek king and Nagashena, the Buddhist monk. These texts provide us a lot of information on the social and cultural life of ancient India. Most of the Jain literature is composed in Prakrit language which is also known as Ardhamagadi. The Angas of the Jains elucidate the contemporary society and the political and economic conditions of the time. Secular Literature It is not connected with any religion or faith. One may say that this form of literature is created by the people and for the people. It is in the form of prose, poetry, novel, play, history, grammar, etc. and travelogues which are accounts of foreigners. In ancient period, during the Maurya age, Kautilya wrote Arthashastra which is a treatise on political science and statecraft. Other important works of this period include Mutra Rakshasa by Vishakha Datta, Katha Sarit Sagara by Somadeva and Brihat Katha Manjari by Kshemendra. The grammatical works like Parnini's Ashtadhyayi and Patanjali's Mahabhasya contain valuable historical information of that period. Ashtadhyayi deals with early grammar of Sanskrit. In 5th century CE, during Gupta period, Kali Datsa wrote Abhishan Shakuntalam, which is regarded as one of the best example of love play between King Dushyanta and Shakuntala. Charaka and Sushruta wrote Samhitas which deal with medicinal aspects known as Ayurveda. Kadambari, written by Banabhatta in 7th century CE, is regarded as the first novel in Sanskrit and his work Harsha Chitra is the first historical account of early period of King Harshavardhan. Vikramadeva Charita by Bilhana describes the achievements of King Vikramaditya, the later Chalukya king. Harshavardhan himself wrote plays like Nagananda and Ratnavali 
which throw light on the conditions of India during his rule. Kalhanas Raj Tarangini traces the history of Kashmir. Raj Tarangini literally means streams of kings. It was the first historical work till 12th century. Foreigners' account. A great deal of our knowledge of ancient Indian history comes from travelogues or accounts of foreign travelers. Megasthenes, the Greek ambassador who lived in the court of Chandragupta Maurya, wrote Indica, an account of India. Ptolemy's Geography of India is another important work. At a later period, Chinese travelers visited India to collect religious books and visit the holy places of Buddhism. Some of them are Fahain, Huen Sang, Ai Singh have recorded valuable accounts of contemporary India. Introduction of Indian History Indian history is divided into two phases. A. Prehistoric B. Historic The prehistoric man left no written records, but they have left their remains. The archaeologists have unearthed many sites in India of Stone Age which have been divided into three periods Paleolithic, Old, Mesolithic, Middle and Neolithic, New. The earliest traces of human activity go back to 1 lakh BCE. Thus, 99% of Indian history comprises of prehistoric period. With the dawn of civilization, language and script evolved. Now, history is recorded or printed. But when printing was not known, it was written by hand on paper. Before the use of paper, records were written on dried palm leaves and the birch tree barks. Copper plates as well as stone inscriptions were also used. Emperor Ashoka the Great engraved his ideas and beliefs on various matters that is religion, social norms and administrative reforms etc. The languages spoken were Sanskrit, Pali and Prakrit in ancient India and the script was Brahmi as well as Karoshti. In the inscription of 3rd century BCE, two types of Brahmi, that is, the northern and the southern, may be distinguished in writing. From the northern script, Devnagari along with regional scripts like Gujarati, Marathi, Punjabi script developed, while the southern variety of Brahmi led to five types of scripts, all now used in South India. Explorers of the World Do you know how new ideas, religion, traditions, knowledge, etc. travelled distant lands in ancient time? The ideas travelled with the merchants, marched with the army and were spread by preachers who promoted their faith. This brought people closer to each other and gave better understanding about each other. Yet some, driven by a spirit of adventure, travelled and discovered new places. Marco Polo 1254 to 1324 was the first European to visit China and encourage the idea of trading with the East. Christopher Columbus 1451 to 1506 sailed from Palos, Spain and discovered islands of West Indies and reached North and South America. Vasco de Gama 1460 to 1524 the Portuguese navigator discovered the sea route to India. All these adventurous discoveries had great economic and political impact in future. India, the land of unity in diversity. After independence, many provinces have been recognized and some new states have come up on the basis of linguistic and cultural similarity of the people of the area so that Regional language may flourish and administrative work may be done in the mother tongue. It is said that India presented a picture of unity in diversity. Actually, in ancient time, Greeks, Parthians, Shakas, Kushanas and Hunas invaded India but after some times they were absorbed in the Indian culture. Greeks were identified as Indo-Greek, Kushana 
and most of foreign invaders adopted Indian religion. The fusion between their culture and indigenous Indian culture resulted in enrichment of the society and encouraged trained contacts of India with the outside world. Names of the country India and Bharat are the two names that we often use for our country. The name Bharat has been given by Aryans. Scholars say that in ancient India, the name of river Indus was given by Aryans as Sindhu. The Greeks and Persians who came in contact with our flourishing rich civilization called the land after Sindhu or Hindus or Indos. Greeks first used and popularized the name India in ancient world. Probably, it was due to the phonetic pronunciation problem. The first article of the constitution says India, that is Bharat. This means both names are synonymous. India is the only country to have an ocean named after it. In Arabic and Persian literature, an alternative name Hindustan is also used. It is still in common use during conversation and in Hindi and Urdu poetry. Understanding a historical date Mani asked his mother why CE and BCE is written after historical dates. What do they mean? His mother said that to find out the date of an event, we mention BCE or CE. They are abbreviations. BCE means before Christian era and CE means Christian era. The year of birth of Christ is regarded as the zero point. The later years are counted as CE. That is why CE counting moves forward and BCE is counted backwards. Dateline 326 BCE Alexander the Great invaded India 1254 to 1324 CE, Marco Polo visited China. 1460 to 1524 CE, Vasco da Gama discovered sea route to India.